I'm Tamara Holder, and this is Sports Court. Former University of Nebraska football star Lawrence Phillips was sentenced to 31 years in prison, and now he's suspected of murdering, guess what, his cellmate. Couldn't stop, could he? What's the deal with these violent football players even when they then go to prison? Join me now to discuss is criminal defense attorney Eric Guster. Welcome, Eric. Thank you for having me. So what is with football players getting in trouble off the field, then being in custody, and then getting in trouble again? Is there no rehabilitation? Well, football players are born to be violent. They are, they are in the most violent sport. Wait, born to be violent? Born to be violent like it's in their genes? I'm not saying it's in their genes, but they are, they are in the most violent sport on earth. They are rough, tough, let me knock your head off type of players, and now it just spills over into their personal life. Sure, so that, does that excuse their personal life? Can they not make the difference between being violent on the field and playing by the rules and then going home and beating your girlfriend? Well, many can, but it's a violent culture. Just like, remember when the New Orleans uh, Saints had that pay to, pay to knock people's heads off and knock people out of the game? That was part of their culture. Bounty. And it, yeah, the, they had Right, the but Sean Payton was... He was suspended for an entire year because of that. That was a shame. Right. That was a sham. And I, I, I disagree yeah. with that. But the point is, a, is that there are rules. There are rules. And the NFL says there are rules that you should play by. But you're saying now that these men have an excuse I'm for engaging in this behavior? I am not saying they have an excuse. But they are in the most violent types of jobs. And sometimes it spills over. And the NFL needs to put in things, put in provisions to help them separate the two between the violent work on the field and then what they take home with them. All right, well, let's talk about separating your violent behavior because Mr. Phillips, he was in trouble at Nebraska. He was suspended uh, while he played college football. Then he's still a sixth-round draft pick in the NFL. Sure. He's cut by the Rams, cut by the 49ers, cut by the Dolphins. These teams keep picking this guy up. What, what message does that send to society? To society, it sends a negative message. Hey, as long as you perform on the field, that's all we care about. That's what the NFL is all about. It's about money. Then why do and they stats. cut them? Then why do they cut somebody if it's all about money? Well, they may cut them for a variety of reasons. If it gets out in the public, just like the recent rash of domestic violence cases with the NFL, once it became public, then oh my gosh, it's a big deal. But when reality sets in, they're all about their profits. Look at what the NFL does overall. So you bring up an interesting point. It's, you're saying that the message, the NFL's message is you can do bad things as long as you don't make it public. That is what I have seen and the public has seen. Uh, with the domestic violence cases that happened last year, the NFL gave a slap on the wrist, but then when it became public, whoa, we need to suspend you for the rest of the season, and then we'll just kick you out of the NFL. They are all about the public image and their pocketbooks. That's what the NFL is all about, unfortunately. Okay, well, let's talk about this man, Mr. Phillips, now being in prison. And he's allegedly killed his cellmate, who was also convicted of murder. What, what's going on? Why are we putting murderers with murderers together? You're a criminal defense attorney. Well, they put everyone with similar cases together. You don't want the pocketbook thief next to a capital murder suspect because the capital murder suspect may be the most violent person. So they put everyone with similar cases together in different cell blocks because that is how they rank their, um, their propensity for violence and the risk that goes with the prison guard. So they have to segregate them according to that. Well, we'll see if he's actually convicted of this murder because right now... He may, not, right have now, he may right. not have done it. Right. There's a lot of other suspects in that prison, so he may not have done it. Well, unless he only has one roommate. Well, it could have been someone else in another cell. You never know. All right. Well, maybe he'll hire you. I don't want it. I'm good. All right. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Sports Court is adjourned.